Hey everybody, I'm Jonathan Randall, and welcome to another episode of How You Like Me Now. This is episode 51. That's right, ladies. Apparently, I can commit to things. So I had this really big opportunity, and I totally blew it. It was something that I wanted so bad and have been dreaming of for a long time, and I just didn't meet the moment, and it has really been hard for me to swallow. I had like one of those Eminem, eight mile, lose yourself moments, and I choked. I actually have a video of the whole thing, and it is so weird to have a recording of you failing. It's probably one of the hardest things I've ever watched, and I've had this huge pit in my stomach ever since that night. The whole thing just really depresses the hell out of me. I think the main lesson I took out of it is to never play it safe and to be as true to yourself and as authentic as possible. Don't try to please other people. Just please yourself because that's all that really matters at the end of the day. And at least if you could say, hey, I did me, you have that. I played it safe. I was more concerned with being liked by the person I was auditioning for than having a good time and, you know, being in the moment. And it bit me in the ass. It's so hard for me now not to be deterred, you know? You, I finally got an opportunity I wanted, and it did not go the way I planned or I had hoped. There are voices in my head saying, just quit, Jonathan. How much disappointment and failure do you want in your life? Obviously, you're not good enough. But the truth is, despite those voices, the whole experience just made me want to try harder and be better. I may be down, but I'm not out. I love what I do. And while I might not be where I want to be career-wise, I am extremely proud that I haven't given up and I have persevered all this time, that I continue to put myself out there and pursue the things that I'm passionate about. One of those things is advocating for Palestinian human rights. And sadly, Israel is still bombing the hell out of Gaza and murdering its people. At the time of this recording, over 11,320 Palestinians have been killed, including 4,650 children. And while the numbers of Palestinians being killed by Israel continues to grow, the numbers of those killed by Hamas on October 7th has gone down from 1,400 to 1,200. Not sure how many dead Palestinians it'll take for Israel to want to stop killing Palestinian children, but considering they have been doing it for 75 years, I don't think there will ever be enough for them until there are no more Palestinians at all. Indiscriminately murdering Palestinian civilians only puts Israel in more danger and makes Jews everywhere look horrible. It makes no sense to me. All the violence, oppression, and dehumanization that Israel has brutally committed against the Palestinians and what led to the attack on October 7th is now just being stepped up where they're just displacing and murdering even more Palestinians. And it's only going to lead to future violence against Israel. Israel isn't eradicating Hamas. They are radicalizing the next group, the next generation of people that are going to have nothing for hate for Israel. Not because they're Jewish, but because of what they're doing in Gaza because they're watching their homes get destroyed and the people they love being killed on top of living their whole lives in a concentration camp. I keep seeing videos posted by Israelis how Israel isn't an apartheid state because Arabs living in Israel have equal rights. And while they do have the right to vote and serve in the Knesset, they still face tons of discrimination and many socioeconomic disadvantages, not to mention that Palestinians don't have the right to return. But Arab citizens of Israel are not why Israel is considered an apartheid state. It's because of the way Palestinians are treated in the West Bank. But way to go. You proved Israel isn't an apartheid state for reasons no one is accusing it of being an apartheid state while totally ignoring why it is an apartheid state. Can't wait to see what your next trick is going to be. The International Criminal Court defined apartheid as inhumane acts committed in the context of an institutionalized regime of systemic oppression and domination by one racial group over any other racial group and 
committed with the intention of maintaining that regime, which pretty much sums up what life is like in the West Bank. I mean, that's a great description. It should be on the West Bank Wikipedia. Palestinians in the West Bank not having freedom of movement or the right to vote or freedom of expression and protest and having a completely different legal system are some of the reasons Israel is an apartheid state. According to Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, other human rights organizations, including Israeli ones like B'Tselem, UN officials, Israeli scholars, and even former Israeli security officials. So I was asked to be part of a panel tonight called Concerned Humans to talk about a ceasefire and a future of peace. And I posted a picture on Instagram that the event organizers had created and sent to me to help promote the event. And a lot of people really, really did not like it. And while I'll continue to be critical of Israel and stand up for Palestinian human rights, I do want there to be peace. That's kind of like my end game, peace for all people. I totally understand that peace won't be easy after decades of Israeli oppression and the October 7th attack, but it really is the only way to finally end the violence and create a better future for all people. Of course, as the occupier and the much more powerful force, I think Israel is really going to have to step up and be a leader in facilitating peace, which it seems to have absolutely no interest in doing. But the longer Israel continues to bomb Gaza and the longer it takes to try to at least make things right by the Palestinian people, the harder it's going to be and the more hatred they're going to create for Israel and for Jews across the world. I'm proud that I was asked to be a part of this panel and speak out against Israel's crimes against the Palestinian people. I was happy to promote it, and I hope the conversation we have tonight will bring people together and shift perspectives. It made me sad that so many people commented against peace, that they would rather continue to watch people die if they can't get exactly what they want or think they deserve. What everyone deserves is a life of freedom and dignity. And we can only create that together through love, not hate. If you're not following me on social media, please do at Jonathan Randall across all platforms. Also, I'd really appreciate if you showed me some support on Kofi. I'll put the link to that in the description. Please remember everyone, at the end of the day, we're all human beings and we're all sharing this planet. We should celebrate what makes us different and try to learn from one another rather than let where we're from or what religion or ethnicity we are divide us. I'm Jonathan Randall. How you like me now?